I, I don't know where to start with this. Because I, I know there's a lot of subscribers to this channel in Vegas. And they won't be happy with tonight's result. There are some transplanted fans from other California teams who live in the Vegas area who may be a little happier with this result. Hi, Harrison. Uh, say hi to Billy for me. Uh, and, and some others. But, uh, you know, uh, I understand the upset and we'll get to it. Uh, in the first period, William Carlson scores from Marsha Soen Smith. And I thought, okay, that's what they needed. That's what I said in the preview they needed. They needed that first line to play like the first line. And I thought they played well. That was the third shot by Vegas, and I thought that was important enough to throw it on the board. Uh, the shots were 11-4 to in favor of San Jose, but they came out of the period down one nothing. So San Jose, likely frustrated in, in the locker room, like, okay, we've outplayed Vegas, but we're behind on the scoreboard, and probably very frustrating to Martin Jones as well. Second period. What happens? Vegas scores on their 10th shot. So that makes it 2 to nothing. It's Cody Eakin, who we will be talking about before this review is over. And there's going to be a lot of discussion regarding Cody Eakin from now until October. Uh, McNabb and Theodore get the assists on that one. So, for Vegas, it's 2 to nothing after 2. And Vegas has been very, very good at protecting leads. You know, 2-goal lead for Vegas is pretty much enough that they should be able to take it home. Now, in the third period... Uh, Pacioretty scores a goal from Stone that makes it three to nothing, and hey, you got yourself a, a big lead for Vegas, and things look good. This is when it happens. So Joe Pavelski on a faceoff uh, takes a cross check from Eakin. It was a cross check, and it wasn't. You know the funny thing is Stastny kind of finished the play off, um, and and it was it was ugly. So Pavelski hits the ice. There's blood everywhere. He's he's kind of you know out on the ice like he's out cold. Uh, Pavelski's been playing hurt in these playoffs, and I I see this incident, and all I keep thinking is, okay, hopefully he's okay. Um, apparently it was a compression cut. Those can be ugly. Um, that's the first aid guy in me coming out when I heard it was a compression kind of like oh that's those aren't those aren't fun so Pavelski hits the ice and a referee watching the play in real time referees do not have access to replays referees have to see an incident that takes place and make a call in real time the referee calls the penalty on Eakin for cross-checking which is good but he makes it a five in a game so you get a five minute major against the Vegas Golden Knights I would have been okay with a two and I'm, I'm not sure if I would have given it to Eakin or Stastny on the play. I would have been fine with a two-minute. And a two-minute power play, of course, when the power play goal is scored, the power play is over. Five-minute major, the power play is not over. So San Jose does kind of a, a rallying cry around this. And Couture scores, I think, six seconds into that power play from LeBanc and Hurdle. It's 3-1. to one. The crowd's into it. And Couture turns to the bench and says that's one. Hurdle then adds one about a minute later from Carlson and LeBanc. So Kevin LeBanc had a huge game tonight for Vegas, or for, for San Jose against Vegas. And at this point, Vegas fans are not happy campers. And I was doing a podcast while this game was, was on. And going into this, this power play, I said, you know, San Jose, if it's a major... They're going to be looking for probably two goals to make it a one-goal game. I never envisioned this. Couture from Burns and LeBanc. That makes it 3-3. And then there's a timeout. And Gerard Gallant claims he didn't call the timeout. Now San Jose wouldn't have called the timeout. Now when it's 3-3. But it, it did feel like it it took some of the energy away from, from uh, San Jose, at least briefly. Uh, LeBanc scores from Meyer. This is still on that same power play. So if you didn't watch this game tonight, that's too bad. There were fans that were sitting behind uh, where Gord Miller was broadcasting from who left when the game was 3 nothing. I'm wondering how many San Jose fans that left when the game was 3 nothing and said, well, we're done for this year. Vegas is in the next round. And now uh, they're they're probably regretting that decision. Um, so it's 4-3. to three, And on the board I write what just happened. 
because I have no idea what I'm witnessing. I I have watched hockey for nearly 40 years. I've never seen anything like this. Now, I know that Vegas fans are going to be upset with the five-minute major, and I agree. It should not have been a five-minute major. And what they talked about later on in the studio was, is this an instance where there should be some form of replay? Where the NHL, Toronto should be able to call in and say, that shouldn't be a five-minute major. Or at least that a referee can go over and look at the replay and go, okay, that's that's two. Uh, it's unfortunate what happened to Pavelski, but that should not be a five. So that's that's a topic that I think coming out of this game, I think we'll end up seeing that at some level with the NHL and the NHLPA, at least discussing it. I don't know that that'll come in, but discussing it. And another uh, instance they talked about in the studio was the delay of game penalty where a puck goes over the glass and that that should be reviewable just to make sure that it actually didn't touch the glass. Saying that, though, Sometimes the replay is really, really inconclusive where you're like, I think it hit the glass because the puck's kind of rolling, but it was kind of rolling before, so I I don't know. I can't tell. Um, so it's 4-3 to three for San Jose at this point. Vegas gets a power play. So here's a chance that some redemption Vegas gets a power play. They do not score on said power play, but they have some energy. They pull Flurry. Marcia so scores from Smith and Stone. All's well. Marsh so with a goal and an assist, it's four to four going into overtime. Um, overtime was crazy. I talked last night about uh, the the Dallas Nashville uh, game and how crazy that was. This was equally crazy. Now, keep in mind these teams don't like each other. The fan bases don't like each other. I don't think tonight's result is going to make any of that any better. Um, now the Sharks kept kept icing the puck while Thornton's line was on the ice. And I put that on the board because I kind of felt like maybe Vegas was going to take advantage and they didn't. There were so many chances where teams just barely missed the net or a defenseman to make the block. And and so many opportunities here that just didn't quite go in. And I still had the feeling like Vegas was going to win it. Honestly, going into overtime, I thought about throwing on my Vegas jersey and hat because I figured we're, we're going to see Vegas win this game. Um... Vegas, arguably up three to nothing, deserved to win the game. But, uh, Barkley Goudreau, and I've got on the board here, Klima. So, for Vegas fans, I feel your pain. The year's 1990. Peter Klima is on the bench for the Edmonton Oilers. He sucks. So, um, coach knows he sucks and says, okay, we're, we're going to staple you to the bench because you're terrible defensively. Um, and then as overtime rolls on and everybody's really tired, Peter Klima comes on the ice fresh as a daisy and skates through everybody and scores. Now, when they announced Barkley Goudreau hadn't played since the third period and he started showing up at 15 minutes into overtime, I went, oh, no, no, because he's fresh. He hasn't played a minute. So everybody else is exhausted and tired and they've got a ringer. Goudreau gets the goal to win the game. And and if you watch that replay, and if you search out the Peter Klima one, I I think it's similar. Now, Klima, it felt like skated through everybody. As a Bruins fan, it was gutting. And, it, oh, I yelled at the TV so much that night. that And I hated Peter Klima forever. Um, I had friends of mine give me Peter Klima cards for years after that. Like, oh, I got a box of cards. I kept you these. Peter Klima, stupid Peter Klima. And I'd throw them on the ground. Um, and... and you know, so I've I've had the ribbing done against me as well over the years. Uh, Carlson and Sorensen get the assists on this. Eric Carlson, uh, there was a lot of talk about him playing hurt in this series. If he's playing hurt, he's playing very well hurt. Uh, the the win tonight comes at 18 minutes and 19 seconds into overtime. The shots in that overtime were 14 to nine for San Jose which I think skews the numbers a little bit in favor of San Jose. They were 15-14 to 14 for Vegas in the third period, 10-9 to 9 for Vegas in the second period. Fleury saves 43 out of 48 shots. He played great. Uh, Jones saved 34 out of 38, and he had some shaky moments tonight, but at the end, he still gets the win. Um, this is the most unexpected comeback I've ever seen. This is the, the biggest... Um, Power play number I've ever I, I can remember is four. Uh, Kevin LeBanc ties an NHL record with four points in a period, 
And I know Vegas fans are going to be really mad about this call. But all I kept thinking, too, with San Jose getting goal after goal after goal after goal, all I kept thinking was, where's the penalty kill? I've seen five-minute power plays in the in the playoffs, in regular season definitely, but even in the playoffs, where there's no goal scored. And the penalty kill comes out and does its job. And so, yes, the call should have been two. If it was two, they would have got one goal. It would have been three to one. Who knows if they end up tying it or not. Probably not. Vegas probably brings it home. But that penalty kill combined with that call, and then Vegas had to come back. I was glad Vegas came back and tied it. I know this overtime loss isn't going to feel any better. I know there's still going to be a lot of complaining in the comment section regarding that call. And that will be the blown call of all blown calls. Uh, and and there have been blown calls going back decades. And Barkley Goudreau doing the Peter Klima thing. Uh, I feel your pain there, Vegas. Absolutely. Uh, for San Jose, they move on to play Colorado. Colorado has to be ecstatic with this tonight. I've talked about seven-game series and how it, it gives a bit of an advantage to a team that's been sitting waiting to play, but you can get cold if you're waiting to play. What's a benefit to Colorado is um, Pavelski's out. I, I can't see Pavelski being able to go in the next series. I guess it's possible if he's not concussed. I just don't see how he's not concussed. You've got a team in, in San Jose that had to go to a long overtime in a Game 7 that does give an advantage to Colorado, definitely, at least for Game 1. Once Game 1's in the books, that advantage kind of goes out the window somewhat. Although, injury-wise, I would say San Jose is much more on the limp right now than Colorado. This game was kind of slow in the beginning. I was having a hard time getting into it after the uh, emotional evening I'd already had with, with Boston against Toronto. But man, that third period, that was some of the craziest hockey I have ever seen. So if you missed it, you missed some crazy hockey. But I can understand it's about 1.45 in the morning on the East Coast. I can understand if people said, I'm just going to bed. Uh, Vegas is up 3 nothing. They win it. I don't care. Just turn the TV off. It's fine. And then they'll wake up in the morning and they'll go, wait, what? So there you go. Uh, the big what moment tonight is, is that San Jose gets the win. And again, we will talk about it until forever. Uh, this is a game that if you're a Vegas fan, you will never stop talking about this. You'll never stop talking about the call. You'll never stop talking about the power play. Again, referees make these calls in real time. They do not have the benefit of, of, of replay. This may very well lead to a change in that. We'll see. But uh, it's it's a rough way to lose. It It's happened before on some, some level, like bad calls being the reason that a team loses. There are some very high-profile reasons for that. But... Uh, you know, tonight Vegas is out in the first round and San Jose's on to the second. So, um, big win for the Sharks. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, I know you will. I know Vegas is going to be very upset. Um, I guess you could downvote the video. That's what Toronto fans have been doing tonight. Uh, that's kind of the expectation on my part. Um, I'm not trying to say anything out of sorts and I'm, I'm being honest in my appraisal of the game and uh, it's it's too bad that there will be kind of a, a dark cloud over the result. San Jose's moving on so for Sharks fans they they can move on from this and they could say uh, well you know these things happen in hockey um, too bad for Vegas but you know once once they get into that second round against Colorado they will be able to move on for this for Vegas like I said that's not going to be the case. Uh, so there you go uh, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.